Hey everybody, Jerk here in uh no sound effects? No music? I'm sitting here in my business casual guard again. Oh no. That can only mean it's time to get good. Sorry, it's been a minute. Let's try that again. Get good. Alright, yes. We are getting good in your neighborhood today. And for those of you who aren't familiar with this series, then you and I are in the same boat. Stick around for the second act, folks. It's entirely different than the first, and don't forget to tip your bartenders. Get Good is the series with no point other than me having a particular game I want to show you and maybe ramble a little bit about the game, or the map, or teammates, or whatever. But one thing you can be sure of is that it is going to have something, right? Right? Well, this one goes out to all you secondary fans. This is a new personal record of secondary hits in a round of 400. Well, 397. What stars have aligned to see me back in a battleship? Well, I finally ranked that new ARP commander up and wanted to try it out on all my secondary focus ships to see how it was. So first, here is the commander and setup. And that is Von Hipper, 16 Legendary 3, and Haruna Matata at 15 Legendary 2. And that gets our secondaries out on the Bismarck to 11.7 kilometers, 11 kilometers on the Massachusetts, 11 kilometers on the Groza Coor first. I wonder if I have a full secondary build there, I'm not sure. 8.7 on the Tirpitz, 7 kilometers on the Odin, and 7.8 kilometers on the Nassau. Sweet baby Jeebus. So if I'm willing to dump five insignias and 30 more commendations, that ought to get my Bismarck out to roughly 12 kilometers. That is a lot of commendations. While we set up to engage our secondaries and get them going, I want to discuss some things I have noticed playing battleships again after taking the past few months off. Well, really since they added carriers. First and foremost, what the hell is wrong with you people? <laughs> I mean, I saw a lot of bad decisions before I took my battleship break, but has nothing changed? Has it gotten worse? Oh my lord, the things I have seen these past couple days, I tell ya, it's enough to drive a man to drink. <sighs> or maybe... I'm just looking for a reason to drink. We're talking battleships leaving one side of the map to go to the other, radar cruisers heading to the back of the map, destroyers at best asking me to spot for them or telling me to get in the cap, I ping maps telling them exactly where other destroyers are and they instead just leave. Destroyers are spotted and our cruisers shoot battleships and therein lies the rub. If I am not in the destroyer or the cruiser, then someone else is, and that someone is more often than not looking to throw the game. Now, this is purely from a solo player perspective, I should say, and to illustrate all of this, let's look at what is happening in this match so far. I am in a two-man division, and we spawn today, my lovely assistant in the god-awful champagne, and there is one division on their team uh, in the Vladivostok of Champagne and a destroyer of some sort. We saw them trying to flee their spawn at the beginning and force the Vladivostok to turn in and separate from his division while the rest of the red team goes to A. Similarly, our team is doing the exact same thing. Two ships leaving their spawn, leaving a battleship out to die. In the red team's case, it's this Vladivostok who just went down, uh, who my division mate broke both of the front guns on. And our unlucky teammate is in a Jean Bart who is being rushed by a Turbitz. Now, when this match started, I asked my division mate where they were going, and them being in a French battleship that is super fast and good at flanking and little else, I had hoped they would go something like the route I am drawing on the minimap. The border of the map is the natural habitat for the Champagne, so if you're going to play that terrible ship, please play it properly. The route is also pretty decent for British battleships as well. Myself and the Vladivostok being more of a brawler class, we're in similar locations as each other, 
And had my division mate rushed that side, well, maybe that would have prevented the black hole we find ourselves in with the rest of our team piling into the circus tent to come look with abject horror and wonder at the Vladivostok with no guns. So now we have a very mirrored setup on both of our teams. Our whole side is on these two caps. Their whole team is on that single cap. So while we watch this cluster funk develop with me madly trying to get away from my team's gravitational forces, let me show you some good spots to go on this map. Long range cruisers can go here. Radar cruisers go here. Battleships go here. And you know what? I really hope some of those educational CCs make some videos breaking down the subclasses of different ships. With battleships, we have snipers, flankers, brawlers, and with cruisers, we have radar, HE spam, brawlers. Actually, cruisers gets a bit more complicated. Then we have various subclasses of destroyers, too, and each subclass of all of those ships have places on each map to go where they will excel. So knowing your ship can always help you carry your team, and by God, from what I've seen these past couple days, I hope you didn't skip leg day because they're all getting on your back. <laughs> now, one could argue that with the addition of carriers, these specialized styles have been made moot because what is the benefit of going on a flank in a battleship if that just means you will be focused by a carrier and sunk? Shouldn't you just stick together with whom you spawned and keep your AA more powerful? Um, you know, it's hard to find a flaw in that thinking. Fortunately, carrier games aren't as prevalent here as they are in PC, and so long as we continue to tar and feather CV mains, maybe it'll stay that way. Okay, enough with the jibba jabba. You are here to see secondaries, and I am pleased to report that the fireworks are about to start, so please take your seats. So far, we've only had 100 connect and only one fire. That's pretty poor odds there. But you should all be able to see how I am changing my direction to get away from my team and that is to create our beloved crossfires. Now, I will say that I can definitely tell a difference on this build when you don't have Cunningham on as an inspiration. My shells definitely aren't as reliable as they normally are, and I'm giving up a decent amount of accuracy for, what, 300 meters more range on my secondaries, but with, what, like 4.5% more accurate secondaries? Is that worth it? Competitively speaking, probably not. But for fun, for me, yes. Now, is everybody in? Is everybody in? The fireworks ceremony is about to begin. Look where we start this, just a little bit over 100, and when we end this part of the engagement, we're going to be at just shy of 400 secondary, so watch what happens here. And I don't know why my PlayStation stuttered there on the record, but I'm kiting away from these guys. I'm letting my secondaries do their thing. And if you look on the minimap, I am headed towards the northeast corner. Specifically, I am looking at that little island to uh, kind of directly my north. I'm going to use that island to turn around and come back towards these guys. I don't want to risk going broadside first because, you know, broadside is bad. So in the meantime, I'm just letting these secondaries fire their ridiculous range. Uh, and they are starting to start some fires a little bit more reliably. We juke those shots from the champagne and I'm getting closer and closer to the island where I want to turn around. I think this one might catch us on the... Nope, we dodged that one. One of these is going to catch us on a double fire. And we are actually going to uh, use it... Or not use it. Use our damage con as we uh, reposition. So we're getting closer now. Uh, that champagne fortunately is missing. We get another salvo out. And I will say that my aim is... So, as I mentioned, yes, my dispersion isn't as good, but I also haven't played Battleships much, really, in about 
four or five months. So my aim is definitely off. And you can see that with that champagne. We get another fire. And here comes a salvo. Dodging that one and still making our way towards the cover of the little island to be able to get our turn in. Mm. I still can't hit us. We start another fire with our secondaries. And there's the terrain that we're looking for. So let's go ahead and start getting our turn. I'd really like to get rid of that Mayoko. Though you're going to see this Mayoko probably has uh, that perk when they know that somebody's targeting them because they are doing some evasive maneuvers as soon as I lock onto them. And uh, right here, I want to shoot at them, but they are using the turpits as cover. So you know what? We might as well just shoot at that turpits. Why not? And we get a pretty decent hit. And this kind of shows you why crossfires are so good. We've lost half of our team and uh, we're going to lose more. <laughs> and the red team here, they are soon going to be up six to three. Uh, but because I'm up here to the north and have these two battleships and cruiser between uh, myself and the rest of my team to the south, well, the red team is going to have to deal with me. I'm angling mostly towards this champagne as the turpits is uh, focused elsewhere. But once that turbots turns to engage me, I'm going to have to make some riskier plays and hope that RNG Jesus blesses me or that the players in these battleships make some mistakes. All right, let's remove this Mayoko. Uh, <laughs> shells split all around them, but that's okay. These secondaries are doing their work. We get a close quarters metal right there and probably right about now is when the turpits realizes hey i've got torpedoes i need to torpedo this bismarck and you can see i've already got my hydro running i put it on because i could tell that my yoko player was decent just by the way they were reacting when they were being targeted so i wanted to put that on to make sure that i wasn't running into any of their torps so the Turpets is starting to make their turn to drop Torps. And so we need to turn to react. And we are turning out. And that's going to mean giving broadside to this Champagne. So let's hope that the Champagne is a poor, as poor of an aim as I am. We are triple fired. There's the Torps. And we are going to take one. But that's what we saved the damage con for. Save the damage con, turn back towards the champagne now to angle to them. And in doing so, we are going to get a second close quarters medal on this Turpitz. Not too shabby right now. And our secondaries are still firing. I'm uh, 25 seconds from being able to get this heal off. So if we can get turned in here, we should be okay. There's a salvo that they do. What, a little bit? I think that was an overpin there. Here comes another one. We bounce those. I get a salvo off into them. Our secondaries are still going. And we can see the uh, champagne has got a ram on their mind right now. So I need to stay bowing towards that to bounce their shots before I can turn and get my rear turrets involved. And this one is for all the marbles right here. So let's get our uh, aim high into the superstructure. Okay. And that looks like we are going to manage to pull a win off here just because we had the caps for so long. Now, that doesn't mean I'm not going to try and sink this New Orleans because that will essentially guarantee the win. They won't be able to come back from points. I don't think they can now. But even still, I was like, wow, that was quite the brawl. So let's go ahead and shoot that New Orleans. And let's see this amazing dispersion. Uh, nope. <laughs> okay, let's shoot the front guns. And here's where RNG says, you know what you can have? You can get the Pitadel. The Pity Citadel. Our first Citadel <laughs> of the game. Uh, which is kind of amusing. And that's going to give us the point lead that's insurmountable. Turn out. I don't even want to risk it at this point. And uh, that's going to be the game. 
großartiges Gefecht. All right, let's see the scoreboard. 2,638 XP for a game. Yes, technically on my chart this would fall under a good game, but it just wasn't. If you look at the XP on the red team outside of first place, just about every single player on their team had more XP than the corresponding rank on the blue team. What does that tell me? Both teams were trying their hardest to lose with only a couple players carrying most of the weight. And so let me ask you this. Would you rather a good player be in a battleship, a cruiser, a destroyer, or a carrier? Let me know down below. That's it for this one, folks. Like or don't, comment if you want to, and subscribe if you want to see what comes next. Thanks for watching. I'll get back out there for another one soon, and we'll talk then.